Hi, I love those thin margins in my clinical theater when I'm doing the aesthetic work. I can do that with CEREC. I can do that with my MCXL and how I mill, which burr system I use. We're going to talk about that on this video, and we're going to talk about how to finish those thin margins so they melt in the mouth. Let's roll the intro. Let's talk about the clinical situations where we want to use a thin margin. First of all, I want enamel on that thin margin. That way I can bond that ceramic to the margin and I prefer a lithium disilicate. That's Emacs. I can make that very, very thin. We're going to talk about how to do that without chip margins. We're going to have margins that are pressable. So my goal with CAD CAM is pressable margins. So back to criteria for thin margins. Number one, it needs to be on enamel. Most of the time, not all the time. You have to look at the occlusion. If they have fractions, you gotta go with a more robust margin. But anteriorly, if I can keep my margin on enamel, I can bond that, it's not going to stain in the future. Number two, I'm not doing a significant color shift. So if they have a dark root, it's not a thin margin. I need to go with a more robust margin and drop it sub gingerly. With a thin margin and not attempting to do a significant color shift, I don't have to go sub -gingible. With a thin finished margin on our restoration, that margin melts at that soft tissue line. We call that the contact lens effect. As a result, if you have healthy enamel or good enamel in the cervical zone and you're just upgrading the surface of that tooth, all you have to do is cement it in and it melts. And that's the beauty of a thin margin. Step one in creating a thin margin is during the preparation stage, you need to go in pre-planned, have a mock-up, have a prototype. We prep through that prototype when it's on the teeth. Often we don't have to reduce very much if we're doing an additive technique with our restorations. That's the beauty of a thin margin. It's on enamel. You don't have to prep the tooth way back to create clearance for that ceramic. So that's step one. Step two is understanding how the MCXL will mill. In my situation, I have four engines, two engines on either side. That allows me to use the EF burr system. The initial mill is with a larger burr system, like the S or the just the standard 12. And then the final component of that mill is with the really small, small, small burrs. And as a result, you get those clean margins. Those are pressable. My marginal thickness parameter when I'm using EF burrs is 50. If you don't have that M6L with the two engines on either side, then you have to think differently. And one more parameter, my minimal thickness is 200 microns, and that's with the EF burr system. Now, if you don't have that system, you can still use the traditional 12 burr on the left. There's a, a few different parameter shifts we need to make for that. Number one, marginal thickness in the parameters needs to be 120. Minimal radial axial thickness is 300. Avoid the S burr. The Esper just doesn't work. That's the left one. It doesn't work very well if you're trying to do a thin margin. It needs to be a more robust chamfer or a shoulder. So that's how we set up our MCXL. It's really important to know that because when you mill it out, you don't want any chips. Once the restoration is milled out, there's a few steps we go through. We're gonna thin the margins twice in the blue state, pre-crystallized, and after it's crystallized. That's where you really get that knife edge margin where it's pressable and there's no gaps or seam in that margin. So we're gonna have fun going through that journey. Most of my anterior restorations are done with this conservative thin feather margin. I really perfected it in my clinical theater, the current software, the current milling unit, and the burrs we have will allow us to do that. So let's get started with the series and have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, you said you're good boy. Oh, this is, this is the way Jordan cuddles. He's such a cuddle bucket. He just puts his head against my cheek and we're gonna go home for lunch. Yeah. Oh, you licking me. Oh, you're such a cuddle bucket. He is my cuddle bucket boy. Yeah. Fortunately, get him groomed. Otherwise, I think he's gonna lick the lens real soon. He's trying to figure out what's going on here. Hey. Hey, I'm gonna back up here so I can put on my seatbelt. We gotta be safe, you know.